There's a lot of books and leaflets out there which say on them, Introduction to Christianity. Sometimes you might get offered them in the street. They try and summarize in a few bullet points what they see as the essentials of the Christian faith. Sadly, most of these things can just be thrown in the bin. Why? They do not faithfully introduce Christianity. That is because they omit our Blessed Mother Mary. My friends, this is not a small error that can be overlooked. The fact is, there is no true Christianity without the Virgin Mary, just as there is no true Christianity without the Catholic Church. The two go hand in hand. You can't get to heaven without the Catholic Church, and you can't get to heaven without the Virgin Mary either. Today, I want to explain why the Holy Virgin is not a side issue to the Christian faith. She isn't an optional extra that you can take or leave. I want to show how and why the Virgin Mary is necessary for the salvation of each one of us. I have three points. Number one, let's think about how our salvation was accomplished. After Adam's sin, Almighty God saw that all of humanity had become slaves of the evil one and in rebellion to him. In his mercy, he didn't leave us all to go to hell, but sent his son to pay the price for the sins of the world and make it possible for us to switch sides, to change from being slaves in Satan's wicked empire towards being citizens in the kingdom of heaven. So Christ saved us through his cross. But think about it. Jesus didn't enter the world a fully grown man. No, the incarnation took place when the Virgin Mary gave her consent to bring the Savior into the world. Salvation came through Mary. There would have been no Calvary if there had been if there had not been Nazareth. The Virgin Mary was essential. Almighty God had decreed that our salvation would be contingent on the consent of the humble and holy Virgin. There was no plan B. If Mother Mary hadn't given her consent to the angel Gabriel, we would all be destined to hell. And that would be the end of the story. Abraham would be in hell. Moses would be in hell. Saint Joseph, he wouldn't be a saint. He would be in hell. They would all have been lost because there would have been no savior, no sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. Of course, the Holy Virgin's consent was empowered by Almighty God. He gave her the grace to consent. And he could see from outside of time that she would consent. But nonetheless, her decision was still from her free will. And from that blessed decision came our salvation. Just as Eve cooperated with Adam in the downfall of humanity, Mother Mary cooperated in its salvation. You could say Eve was the co-destroyer, the co-dammer. Mother Mary was the co-redemptrix. Without Eve, there would have been no fall. Without Mary, there would have been no salvation. And Our Lady didn't just help with our redemption through the Annunciation, but throughout her whole life, she continued to be the faithful companion of our Redeemer, supporting him in his work of redeeming us. So that is point number one. God chose to make salvation dependent on Mary. No Mary, no Jesus. Point number two. Mary wasn't just necessary historically speaking. She is still necessary in the salvation of each one of us today. St. Augustine in the 4th century made this clear. He said, Mary is the mother of the entire Christ, both of the head and his members. 
Just as Mary formed Jesus Christ, the head of the church, in her womb, so she spiritually gives birth to the members of the church. Why is this the case? Well, God doesn't change. We all know that. When the Holy Ghost had made his decision to bring Christ through Mary, he made a permanent decision. So from the time of the Incarnation, the Holy Ghost has always cooperated with Mary in bringing the interior presence of Christ into the souls of men. We say, don't we, in the Hail Mary, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. That's not stating, just stating a historical fact. It's repeating the fundamental truth that from now on, Jesus always comes through Mary. The Holy Spirit always uses Mary to bring grace, that is, to gradually form Christ more and more in the souls of men. So we can say that all graces flow through Mother Mary. Mary is the means the Holy Ghost uses in all his work. So that's why we call the Virgin Mary the Mediatrix of all graces. God has made her the Mediatrix of all graces, whether you like it or not. And she isn't just like a channel or a funnel, passively giving grace. No, she cooperates freely in the forming of Christ in each one of us, just as she cooperated freely at the Annunciation. There is no salvation outside of the Virgin Mary. All graces flow from her as she wills, when she wills, and in the quantity and manner that she wills. That is because she's so united with the Holy Spirit, she is so at one with his will, his holy will. So not only is Mary necessary, the truth is, my friends, it's extra ecclesi, extra mariam, nulla salus. Extra mariam, nulla salus. That is, outside of Mary, there is no salvation. Obviously, that makes us wonder, are people able to be saved in these false religions that deny the Blessed Virgin is mediatrix of all graces? Have they any chance of getting to heaven? No one can deny our lady still gives some graces. She's a good mother and wants to help to save them, help them to be saved in spite of their efforts. But let me make it clear. The church has never canonized anyone that has had a hatred or indifference to the Blessed Virgin Mary. In fact, the saints say that devotion to her is the sure sign that one is destined to be saved. And that the reverse is true. If someone is cold or has little love for her, it is a sign, an infallible sign, that they are one of the reprobate. Christ made it clear that the number saved was not the majority. The way people speak these days, you think we're all going to go to heaven. But that is a different religion, my friends. That is not Christianity, no matter how many priests tell you otherwise. So that's point number two. Mary is necessary for salvation because she is the one all graces flow through. That is something that has been made clear at every true apparition of Our Lady. Last point then, number three. Personal devotion to Mother Mary is necessary for salvation. Because the Virgin Mary is the spouse of the Holy Spirit, whenever he sees the likeness and the virtues of Blessed Mary, he once again unites with her through grace to bring about the presence of Christ in that person. So it's the extent that we have devotion to Our Lady and strive to possess her virtues and qualities that the Holy Spirit will form the interior likeness of Christ in us. Devotion to Blessed Mother is like the litmus test of sanctity. The litmus test. Christ himself made this clear in his final words to the beloved disciple. He said to John, Behold your mother. That was not a suggestion. That was a command. And that command is repeated to each one of us. You must recognize her as your mother. And like St. John, 
You must take her into your own home. In fact, the Greek doesn't say John took Mother Mary into his home. Home. It says he took her into his own. His own. The Greek is saying he took her into his heart. And that's what we have to do if we want to be true disciples of Christ. And it is the only way. And how well are you doing on that? Are you saying her rosary each day, all the decades, or just five? Have you made St. Louis Marie de Montfort's total consecration to Mary? Are you involved in your parish groups in honour of Our Lady, like the Legion of Mary? Do you have statues of her in your home? Are you wearing the scapula? This isn't optional. At Fatima, those beautiful apparitions, Almighty God revealed that in these dark days, as the end of the world draws closer, he wants, he wants to prepare the way for the return of his son by a period of special devotion to the Blessed Virgin. All the great saints taught this. God is preparing us for the return of his son. He came the first time through Mary, and his second coming will be preceded by a time of special devotion to her. So then, my friends, let us prepare the way of the Lord, the way for the Lord. Let us do so in no other way than the way he chose himself, the way of Mary. So in conclusion, Mary, the Blessed Virgin, is absolutely necessary for our salvation. She was necessary in history, for she was and is the co-redemptrix. She is necessary in the order of grace, for she is, she has become the mediatrix of all graces. And she is necessary in our own devotional life, because Christ wants us to love her as our mother. Let us be her faithful children, let us show her gratitude. Let us make it clear to all men the truth that, outside the Virgin Mary, there is no salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.